Hello everyone, in this chapter we will understand the process of blending. If we have to define blending at a very basic level, blending is a process of merging two pixels. So if you have to merge these two pixels into a single one, this process in the rendering pipeline will be called as blending. In the previous chapter, we understood sorting and to sort the objects in the scene properly, Z test or the depth test is performed on each fragment or pixel of an object. And blending is an optional step that comes after Z test is done and pixel shader has calculated the color and the alpha of the pixel. So why blending is an optional step? It is because normally we have to perform blending only when a transparent or semi-transparent pixel comes in front of another pixel. So if solid cone comes in front of solid cone, it will just overlap this solid cone which is behind. We will not have to blend the pixels of these two meshes. But when a semi-transparent or a transparent comes in front of opaque object, in that case we will have to merge the pixels. And that is why it is an optional step. And when a transparent or semi-transparent pixel comes in front of another pixel, we need a way to combine them and show the result on pixels of a 2D screen. So eventually all the pixels will be drawn on this 2D screen and that is why we will have to merge the pixels of semi-transparent or transparent object and anything behind it. It is similar to the way we merge or flatten different layers in Photoshop. And similar to Photoshop, shading language also provides us different ways to merge the pixels. As in the previous chapter, we saw how multiple objects are sorted based on the Z distance of each fragment. And when a pixel of an object passes the Z test, its color and the alpha value given by the pixel shader goes in the color buffer. Otherwise, these values for a pixel will be rejected. Now, let's understand blending by taking an example. Suppose rendering pipeline just finished running the Z-test and the pixel shader for all the pixels of this opaque cone. And as this cone is opaque, we will not have to perform blending on any pixel of this cone. And because this cone is at the farthest distance, it will also pass the Z-test for all the pixels of this mesh and the color and the alpha value given by pixel shader will go to the color buffer. And once they are sent to the color buffer, we will treat the shape as being drawn on the screen. For every pixel, there is a color buffer. Now comes the turn of this semi-transparent mesh card. And why we are calling it semi-transparent? Because its alpha value is lesser than 1 and greater than 0. So it's not completely transparent and it's not completely opaque. And the pixels of this card are transparent and we will perform blending on the pixels of this mesh. So when we will combine two fragments, to perform blending, we need alpha value of the mesh card given by the pixel shader. Another is the alpha value that is in the color buffer for that particular pixel. For example, if we are working on this fragment of this semi-transparent mesh card, we need the alpha calculated by the pixel shader and the alpha value that is stored in the color buffer for that particular pixel. So these two alpha values we will need to blend. And based on these two values, we will merge the color value of pixel of mesh card given by pixel shader and the color value stored in color buffer for that particular pixel. So think of blending as a function which takes two parameters which are those alpha values and we will call them factors. And based on these two parameters 
it works on the color value calculated by pixel shader and the color value in color buffer and finally it will return merged color so this is blending to perform or enable blending in our shader